kind of hobnobby relatives and be why to hushka obi miha and i said good day to you my name is obi miha in the tutelo language all right relatives hope everyone is doing well today um coming back at you again with the uh family history this time we're back over to uh Dar delaware maryland and um like i said in the uh last delaware maryland video that we would start off with the borman family so that's where we're gonna head it off all right relatives let's get into it so we got the uh borman family james borman born say 1670 was the indian servant of john dent of st mary's county on uh, august 11 1691 when the charles county court ordered that the constable of excuse me the constable for port tobacco hundred return him to his master and it goes on to say he may have been the father of samuel born say 1695 ran away from his master captain uh abraham uh Owens of uh, kent county delaware and was uh brought before the kent county delaware court in november 1718 and it says uh, Samuel was ordered to serve Ewens four years for the expenses and taking him up. And Ewens was ordered to pay seven pounds to the sheriff of Newcastle County for his expenses and five pounds to John Cowgill for curing him of divers, very bad wounds. All right. And it says uh, they may have been the ancestors of Hannah born say 1775 all right goes on to say hannah borman born say 1775 was the mother of susanna born about 1800 obtained a certificate of freedom in prince george's county on april 24th 1816 a bright mulatto girl about 16 years old a free woman being the reputed daughter of hannah borman a free woman of color then we got john born about 1803 obtained a certificate of freedom in prince charles or prince, excuse me prince george's county on uh, september 27th 1819 a bright mulatto boy about 16 years old is free being the reputed son of hannah borman a free woman of color then it shows uh here in parentheses where you can find the um the where you can find the information on this all right, family, so that was the Borman family. Um, again, like I always say, if the surname shows up in your genealogy, um, states here already that uh, he was an Indian servant. So um, we got some good uh, names, uh, date of births, county. Um, so definitely a good place to check. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we have the Bond family. This is Baltimore County. Mulatto Bess, born, say, 1692, was the servant of the widow Day in August 1711 when she appeared in uh, Baltimore County Court and named William Bond as the father of her illegitimate child. She may have been the mother of Richard, head of a uh, Anne Arundel County household of six other free in 1790, perhaps the father of Edward Bond, who obtained a certificate of freedom in um, Anne Arundel County on uh, January 16, 1818, aged about 21 years, yellowish complexion, freeborn. Then we got Harry Bonds, a uh, free Negro, taxable in Spicetua, Upper 100, uh, Harford County in 1783. All right, next we're going to do Talbot County. Uh, Martha Bond, born, say, 1725, the servant of Francis Pickering of uh, St. Michael's Parish, confessed to the Talbot County Court in November 1745 that she had an illegitimate mulatto child. She may have been the mother of John, a free mulatto, living on uh, Talbot Island, Tuckahoe and Kings Creek, 
And then it says uh, Talbot Island, Talbot County in 1783. And we got Rachel, head of a uh, Caroline County household of three other free in 1790. All right, relatives, uh, we have the Bond family here again. Um, some good uh, dates, names, counties. Um, so if the Bond family is part of your ancestry, um, you got some good information here. All right, let's move on to the Bone family. It says Elizabeth Bone, born, say, 1740, a white woman servant of Thomas Alexander of Baltimore County, confessed to the court in March 1758 that she had a son named Nathan by a Negro. The court sold her son to Mary Alexander. It says uh, Thomas's daughter for uh, 20 shillings and sold um, Elizabeth to her master for seven years in August 1758 for 20 pounds. She was the mother of Nathan born before March 1758, David head of a uh, St. Mary's County household of seven other free in 1800. Then we got Sarah Bones born before 1776, head of a Frederick County household of uh, four free colored in 1830. All right, relatives, so that is the Bone family. Um, again, if that genealogy pops up for you, um, we got some names, uh, date of births, uh, and the county. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we have the Boone family. And it says uh, Susanna, Susanna Middleton. Born, say, 1770, was a white woman who had mixed-race children named Boone in uh, Frederick County. It says uh, she was the mother of Thomas Boone, born about 1794, obtained a certificate of freedom on June 4, 1816, a dark mulatto man about 22 years, about 5 feet 8 and 3 quarter inches high, freeborn in it freeborn and a child of Susanna Middleton, a white woman, as appears by the affidavit of Barbara Nay. And we got uh, Susanna Boone, born about 1795, obtained a certificate of freedom in Frederick County on June 4th, 1816. A bright mulatto, uh, aged about 21 years, five feet, four inches, and three quarters of an inch high, child of Susanna Middleton. Next, we have John Boone, uh, born about 1796, obtained a certificate of freedom, free, excuse me, obtained a certificate in Frederick County on June 4th, 1816, a dark mulatto aged about 20 years, five feet, three inches high, freeborn, child of Susanna Middleton, a white woman, as appears by the affidavit of Barbara Nay. Then we got Nancy Boone. Born about 1801, obtained a certificate of freedom in Frederick County, June 4th, 1816. A dark mulatto, aged about 15 years, five feet two inches and a half high. Freeborn child of Susanna Middleton. Then it shows where you can uh, find her certificate of freedom. All right, relatives, that was the uh, Boone family. Um, again, it shows uh, names, date of births, um, in the county that they lived in. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we have the Booth family. It says the Booth family won their petition for their freedom from David Weems in the Maryland uh, Court of Appeals. And members of the family won a suit for their freedom from Joseph Mudd in Charles County Court in August 1803. Their cases were probably based on descent from a white woman. Members of the family were. Uh, we got Richard, brother of uh, Edward Booth, obtained his freedom from David Weems, perhaps identical to R. Booth, head of a Prince George's County household of two other free in 1810. Then we got Hannah, born, say, 1765. Um, next is Edward, born about 1767. Obtained a certificate of freedom in Anne Arundel County on May 2nd, 1807. 
about the age of uh, 40 years, his complexion of a nutmeg color, is the identical person who petitioned for his freedom in the general court against David Weems, and who, and who, as it appears, obtained his freedom by the decision of the Court of Appeals um, in the case on the appeal of Richard Booth, who is the brother of the said Edward Booth, against the said David Weems. The said Edward Booth was born on uh, Herring Bay in uh, Ann Arundel County. He was head of a Baltimore City household of Forever Free in 1810. All right, next we got uh, Solomon, head of a uh, Baltimore City household of 10 other free in 1810. Then we have James, head of an uh, Ann Arundel County household of nine other free in 1810. And we got David, head of a Washington County household of four other free in 1810. And we have Peter, head of, a, uh, head of an Ann Arundel County household of one other free in 1810. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, Hannah Booth, born, say, 1765, was freed by Alexander McPherson by deed, recorded in uh, Prince George's County on uh, November 1st, 1803. It says, uh, my Negro woman, Hannah, descended from the family that calls themselves Booths. And her six children, Margaret, Rachel, Henry, James, Henry, and John. Uh, Hannah recorded the manumission in Charles County on March 29, 1804. Whereas a family of Negroes claimed by Joseph Mudd of Charles County calling themselves Booths. Sued for, sued for and obtained their freedom in Charles County Court at uh, August term 1803. And whereas the Negroes here and after named are the same family. And it shows uh, some uh, land records. Uh, Hannah was the mother of Margaret. And we got Rachel, born, say, 1788, head of a Washington County Household of four other free in 1810. Then we got Henry, James, Henry, and then John. All right. Relatives, that was the um, Booth family. And uh, again, we got some good information on this. Uh, we got names, uh, some of the children's names, uh, where they were born, and uh, some good dates to uh, start out with. All right, so let's keep it moving. Uh, next, we have the Boston family. All right, so it says members of the Boston family were, we got James, born, say, 1714, Mary Catherine uh, Banneker, Negroes, on uh, May 22nd, 1735, in St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore. And then uh, next, we have Catherine, born, say, 1740, Y, born about 1760, William, born, say, 1763, Philip, born about 1772, and we got, uh, says Charles, head of an uh, Ann Arundel County household of two other free in 1800, John, head of a Dorchester County household of one other free in 1800. Uh, Clarissa, born about 1784, obtained a certificate of freedom in Ann Arundel County on February 5th, 1819, aged about 35 years, yellowish complexion, freeborn. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we have uh, Catherine Boston, born, say, 1740, was described as a yellow woman, being a Portuguese. Um, in a suit brought by her son, Anthony Boston, a slave who was granted his freedom in Ann Arundel County about 1793, the court ruled that the family descended from a Spanish woman named Maria. Um, it says to her daughter, Lana, to Lana's daughter, Violet, Lana was described as being of yellow complexion with long black hair. And it says, uh, Catherine was the mother of Anthony, won his freedom about 1793, head of a Prince George's County household of three other free in 1800. 
you know, we got uh, Sarah Boss, or excuse me, Sarah Born, say 1785. All right, next we got Y. Boston, born about 1760, obtained a certificate of freedom in Anne Arundel County on August 20th, 1818. Aged about 58 years, black complexion, freeborn. Says uh, she may have been the uh, mother of Peter, born about 1783, obtained a certificate of freedom in uh, Anne Arundel County on August 22nd, 1818. Um, aged about 35 years, black complexion, freeborn. Then the next one says Darkey. Born about 1786, obtained a certificate of freedom in um, Ann Arundel County on October 26, 1818. Aged about 32 years, dark complexion, freeborn. Next, we have Robert, born about 1786, obtained a certificate of freedom in Ann Arundel County on uh, September 10, 1812. Aged about 26 years, dark brown complexion, freeborn. And if you guys notice here, um, right next to this, it's showing um, where their certificates of freedom, uh, the dates, and where they can be found. Okay. Um, next, we got Sarah, born about 1788, obtained a certificate of freedom in Ann Arundel County on August 20th, 1818. Um, aged about 30 years, black complexion, freeborn. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we have uh, William Boston, born, say, 1763, was head of a Talbot uh, County household of four other free in 1790 and five in 1800. Says he may have been the father of William, born about 1788, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on uh, July 27, 1816. A dark mulatto man, about 28 years of age, 5 feet 6 and a half inches high, born free and raised in the county. All right, next we got uh, Philip Boston. Born about 1772, was head of an Ann Arundel County household of eight other free in 1800. He obtained a certificate of freedom in Ann Arundel County on uh, March 27, 1812. A Negro, dark complexion about 40 years of age, obtained his freedom by petition in the late general court against Richard Sprigg. He may have been the father of, all right, we got uh, Peter, born about 1791, obtained a certificate of freedom in uh, Ann Arundel County on uh, April 20th, 1814, aged about 23 years, dark complexion, freeborn. Next, we got David, born about 1793, obtained a certificate of freedom in um, Ann Arundel County on October 3rd, 1815, about 22 years of age, dark complexion, freeborn. Then next, we have uh, Caesar, uh, born about 1795, obtained a certificate of freedom in uh, Ann Arundel County on June 7th, 1817. Aged about 22 years, dark complexion, freeborn. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we have uh, Sarah Boston, born, say, 1785. A free woman of color, was living in uh, Prince George's County where her children obtained certificates of freedom. She was the mother of Charles Boston Dulaney, Born about 1804, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on August 13th, 1825. Bright complexion, about 21 years old, son of Sarah Boston, a free woman of color. And we got uh, Peter, born about 1806, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on September 13th, 1826. A mulatto boy, about 20 years of age, son of Sarah Boston. Then we have Betsy, born about 1810, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on uh, September 13th, 1826. A mulatto woman, about 16 years old, daughter of Sarah Boston. 
All right, next we have uh, Mary, born about 1812, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on uh, September 13th, 1826. A mulatto girl, about 14 years old, daughter of Sarah Boston. And then it says, notes, a Negro man named Boston, a white woman named Nancy, who still had three years to serve, and a mulatto girl aged eight years uh, free at the age of 31 years were listed in the inventory of the Anne Arundel County estate of James Barnes on uh, May 16, 1749. All right, relatives, so that was the Boston family, and uh, we got a whole bunch of good information on that. Um, you got, uh, again, names, kids' names, parents, date of births, and counties. All right, so that is the uh, surname comes up in your uh, genealogy search. This is uh, some good information here. All right, so next we have the Boswell family. All right. It says uh, members of the Boswell family were Terry, head of a Charles County household of six other free in 1800. Then we got uh, Tracy, born about, born, say, 1775. Uh, Tracy Boswell, born, say, 1775, was a free woman of color and mother of Maria, born about 1795, attained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on uh, January 12th, 1818. A black woman about 23 years old, 5 feet 7 or 8 inches tall, and has a brown complexion, a descendant of uh, Tracy Boswell, a free woman. Then we got Letty, born about 1799, uh, attended Certificate of Freedom in Prince George's County on uh, January 12, 1818. A... Uh, Black woman, about 19 years old, 5 feet 7 inches tall, and it has a brown complexion, the descendant of Tracy Boswell. Then we got Henry, born about 1802, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on uh, January 9, 1823, about 21, 21 years old and 6 feet one and a half inches tall, son of Tracy Boswell. Then we have Elizabeth, born about 1805, obtained, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on January 9th, 1823. Light complexion is about 18 years old and five feet, four and a half inches tall, daughter of uh, Tracy Boswell, a free woman of color. All right, relatives, that was the Boswell family. Um, again, if their name shows up in your genealogy. Um, we got uh, names. We got dates of birth. Uh, we also have the county that they lived in. Um, so this is definitely good information um, if the surname shows up in your genealogy. All right. And next we have the Bottler family. It says members of the Bottler family in Maryland were Blake, excuse me, Black Charles, head of a uh, Prince George's County household of uh, eight other free in 1800. And we have Mary, free Negro, head of a Prince George's County household of six other free in 1800. Then we have Letty, free Negro, head of a Prince George's County household of four other free in 1800. Then we have Betty, head of a Washington County household of six other free in 1800. Um, next, we have Catherine, born about 1801, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on August 13th, 1822. A uh, mulatto woman, about 21 years old, and uh, five feet one inches tall, born free in Prince George's County. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, we have uh, John, uh, born about 1807, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on uh, July 8, 1828. A bright mulatto man, about 21 years old, and uh, five feet eight and a half inches tall, son of Negro Betsy, a free woman of color. All right, relatives, so that was the uh, Bottler, 
bottler family. And again, um, that they are showing up in your genealogy. Uh, they were in Maryland. It shows that they were in Prince George's County. Um, give some names and uh, some dates of birth. Um, so if this is your uh, this this is your ancestors, this is some good information to start with. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, next, we have the Bowen family, and it says Ali Bowen, born say 1755, was indicted for a mulatto bastardy by the Kent County Court in November 1774. She was probably related to uh, Nathan, head of a uh, Kent County household of four other free in 1810. Perhaps identical to the Nathan Bowen, who was head of a Kent County household of five other free and the slave in 1810. All right, relatives, so that is the uh, Bowen family. Um, not a whole lot of information, but we got a few little gems in there. So if that uh, surname shows up, um, hopefully this is helpful to you. All right, next we have the Bowser family. It says uh, Richard Bowser, born, say, 1720, was a free Negro who was uh, buried uh, near the ferry to Kent Island on July 24, 1769. His wife may have been Rachel Bowser, who was presented by the Queen Anne's County Court in March 1770 for failing to list herself as a taxable. She was buried near the ferry to Kent Island on July 29th, 1771. And it says uh, they, they may have been related to the Bowser family of Virginia and North Carolina. Their descendants may have been Elizabeth, born, say, 1745, presented by the Queen Anne's County Court in March 1770 for failing to list herself as a taxable. Then we got uh, Thomas, born about 1758, a 12-year-old orphan boy, no race, I didn't, I, um, no race indicated, bound to David Evans by the Queen Anne's County Court in March 1770 until the age of 21, head of the Kent County, Maryland household of three other free and four slaves in 1810. He may have been the Thomas Bowser who was deceased on March 10th, 1846, when, there, when his only heir, William Bowser, provided testimony to the Anne Arundel County Court that Thomas had served as a private in the Maryland line during the Revolution. Then we have uh, Elias, kept and clothed by John Carsey from December 23rd, 1770 to November 1771 in uh, Queen Anne's County. Next we got Ruth, born say 1760. Then we have Jane, Jamie, uh, born about 1745, a 105-year-old mulatto, born in Maryland, counted in the 1850 census for Frankfurt, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in uh, 1850. A few households away from a 55-year-old mulatto named James Bowser, who was a carpenter, also born in Maryland, was $600 of real estate. Next, we got uh, Percy, head of a Dorchester County household of six other free in 1800. Then we got Simon, head of a Kent County, Maryland household of two other free in 1800. Next, we have Nancy, married Joseph Wilson, Three Blacks, September 8th, 1810, in St. Paul's Parish, Baltimore. Next, we have William, who was married to Selena Negro of uh, Miss Mary Johns on uh, September 15th, 1805, when their daughter Eliza was baptized at St. George's Parish, uh, Hartford County. It says Johns and St. George's Parish registers. All right, next we got Phil, Negro, uh, head of a uh, Hartford County household of seven other free in 1810. Then we got uh, Robert, head of a Baltimore City household of five other free in 1810. 
And we have Lewis, head of a Baltimore City household of three other free in 1810. Then we got Rachel, head of a Kent County household of two other free in 1810. All right, it says uh, Ruth Bowser, born, say, 1760, had an illegitimate child named Anne by Thomas Jackson in uh, Queen Anne's County in 1779. Shows where you can see that information. Then it says she was head of a Queen Anne's County household of uh, six other free in 1790. And she was the mother of Anne, born about 1779. All right, let's keep it moving. Now, uh, actually, um, again, that was the Bowser family. Um, so we got some good dates. Um, as far as birth dates and uh, the county that these people lived in. And again, if the Bowser uh, surname pulls up, this is some good information to check into. All right, now let's keep it moving. Uh, next, we got the Brady family. All right. It says members of the Brady family were Charles, born about 1769, obtained a certificate of freedom in St. Mary's County, on March 6, 1809, um, age 40 years or thereabouts, complexion very bright, hair long and middling straight, was born free. Next, we got James, head of a Kent County household of four other free in 1800. Nancy, free Negro, head of a Prince uh, George's County household of one other free in 1800. Then we have Mary, a mulatto married John, the slave of uh, Miss Hoxton on March 20th, 1793 in St. Mary's, Matter Woman Parish, uh, Charles County. All right, so that is the uh, Brady family. And uh, looks like uh, we got some good birth dates, the uh, county that they lived in. So if the Brady family is showing up in your genealogy, definitely a good place to check. All right. All right, relatives, so our next uh, family that we got here is going to be the Brenning or Browning family. It says uh, Sarah Brenning, born, say, 1743, the white Spencer servant of William Spencer, was convicted on March 1763 by the Kent County, Maryland court for having a child by a Negro man. She may have been the mother of Charles Browning, head of a Kent County household of four other free in 1810. All right, so not a whole lot of information uh, listed here, but a uh, little bit of information to go off of in case that uh, surname shows up uh, for Maryland, Kent County. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, next, we have the Brown family. It says uh, Ann Arundel and Prince George's Counties. So we have uh, Eleanor Brown, born, say, 1689, the servant of Thomas Ricketts, confessed to the Ann Arundel County Court in November 1709 that she had a child by her master's Negro will. Um, her son, born about 1709, was bound to Henry Meriday until the age of 31 in March of 1718-19. She confessed to having a child by Negro Sam belonging to Colonel Mayhall. The court ordered her to serve her master. Uh, Thomas Ricketts, 12 months for the trouble of his house and bond the child to uh, Henry Maraday until the age of 31. She was the mother of John, born about 1713, a 10-year-old mulatto with 21 years to serve when he was valued at 15 pounds in the May 31st, 1723 inventory of the Anne Arundel County estate of Thomas Ricketts, deceased. And we have uh, Margaret, born about 1716. Then we got Philemon, born about 1718, about four or five years of age on May 31st, 1723 when he was listed in Thomas Ricketts' estate. Uh, Thomas Ricketts estate. All right, let's keep it moving. 
Margaret Brown, born about 1716, was a seven-year-old mulatto, when uh, 24, 24 years to serve when she was valued at 11 pounds in the May 31st, 1723 inventory of Thomas Ricketts. Um, she was called Mulatto Margaret at Meredith Davis on uh, November 27th, 1739, when she confessed to the Prince George's County Court that she had an illegitimate child. The court ordered her to serve 10 la to uh, receive 10 lashes. She was called Margaret Brown, no race indicated. The servant of Meredith, Meredith Davis on uh, August 28, 1742, when the court ordered that she receive 10 lashes and bound her illegitimate child named John to her master until the age of 21. She had another child named Charity before March 16, 1744-45, for which she received 10 lashes, and another child before August 23, 1748. She was called a, a uh, mulatto woman peg and had 18 months to serve when she was listed in the inventory of the Prince George's County Estate of Meredith Davis which was recorded on February 23rd, 1754. She was the mother of, we got uh, Anne born, say 1739. We got John born about 1742, perhaps the unnamed mulatto boy who still had 11 years to serve when he was listed in the inventory of the Prince George's County Estate of Meredith Davis, which was recorded on February 23rd, 1754. He may have been the John Brown free mulatto who bound himself to Reverend Mr. Thomas Bacon in Frederick County. Bacon petitioned the court in March 1765, saying that John had run away twice since binding himself as an apprentice. The court ordered that he serve Bacon another year as restitution. He may have been the John Brown who was head of a Montgomery County household of four other free in 1790. Um, next, we have Charity, born about 1745. Uh, George, head of an Anne Arundel County household of seven other free in 1790. Next, we have Anne Brown, born, say, 1739, confessed to Prince George's County Court on uh, November 27, 1753, that she had a five-week-old mulatto named Eleanor. The court sold the child to Mary Eldon, or excuse me, Edelin, until the age of 31. She may have been identical to Nancy Brown, who was head of an Anne Arundel County household of seven other free in 1790. She was the mother of Eleanor, born in October 1753. All right, and it says other members of the Brown family on the Western Shore were, uh, we got uh, Henrietta, head of a Charles County household of eight other free in 1800. Hannah, head of a Baltimore City household of six other free in 1800. Thomas, head of a Baltimore City household of five other free and a slave in 1790 and six other free in 1800. Then we got Joshua, head of a Baltimore City household of six other free in 1800. Then we have uh, Benjamin, head of a Baltimore town household of seven other free in 1790. We got John, head of an Ann Arundel County household of five other free in 1790. Mary, head of a Baltimore town household of uh, three other free in 1790. We got John, free mulatto, head of a black excuse me, of a Back River, Baltimore County household, uh, four other free in 1790. Then we got Samuel, head of a Frederick County household, uh, three other free in 1800. Then we got Catherine, head of a Frederick County household of two other, uh, excuse me, two other free in uh, 1800. Then, then we got uh, Jane, head of a Frederick County household of two other free in 1800. Then we have Mary, born about 1789, obtained a certificate of freedom in Ann Arundel County on um, August 21st, 1819, aged about 30 years, dark complexion, freeborn. 
All right, next we have uh, Kent County. We have uh, Elizabeth Brown, born, say, 1690, was a servant of John Carville of Kent County, Maryland, on uh, March 24, 1707-08, when she admitted in court that she had a child by William Jenkins, uh, one of her master's slaves. The court ordered that she receive tw uh, 20 lashes, that her child serve her master according to law, and that her master deliver her to the court at the expiration of her term of service. She may have been the ancestor of some of the following members of the Brown family. We got Marguerite, Negro, head of the Kent County, Maryland household of six other free in, in 1790. Um, Darkey, Negro, head of a Kent County household of three other free in 1790. We got Harry, head of a uh, Kent County household of uh, five other free in 1800. We got uh, John, head of a Kent County household of four other free in 1800. Uh, we got Thomas, head of a Kent County household of three other free in 1800. We got Dark, head of a Talbot household of seven other free in 1790. Um, Nicholas a Mulatto fined 10 shillings by the Queen Anne's County Court in March 17, 1774, head of a Queen Anne's County household of seven other free in 1800. We got uh, Abraham, born, say, 1752, discharged from the service of William Newman by the Queen Anne's County Court in March 1774. Next, we got Anthony head of a Queen Anne's County Court household of five, five other free in 1800. Thomas, head of a Talbot County household of four other free in 1790 and five in 1800. Benjamin, a free Negro taxable and gunpowder house, or excuse me, gunpowder hundred, Hartford County in 1783. Negro, head of a Hartford County household of four other free in 1790. Then we got James, head of a um, North Milford, Cecil County household of one other free in 1790. Then we got John, head of a um, Cecil County household of five other free in 1800. Then we got uh, Daniel, head of a Cecil County household of two other free in 1800. Then we got Perry, born about 1790 obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on uh, August 19th, 1815. A bright mulatto man, about 25 years of age, five feet, eight inches high, born free and raised in the county. All right, relatives, so that was the, um, let's see who we got here. Uh, looks like the Brown family. So we actually got uh, some good information. It looks like they were in Ann Arundel and Prince George's County, uh, some of the family. So we got names, date of births, county. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, looks like, uh, yeah, so uh, those two counties and also uh, Talbot County looks like as well. All right, relatives, so I think uh, that's where we'll stop for today. Um, Next time we do the Delaware, Maryland family history, uh, we'll be on the uh, Broom Again family, starting out with them. All right, so let me uh, stop screen sharing. All right, relatives, so um, again, um, you know, doing this genealogy, very important. Um, I appreciate every single one of you, as always, with the questions that I get in the comments and uh, all the love that I'm receiving from you all. I appreciate it. Um, again, uh, genealogy is definitely very important, and this is how, um, like I always say, you you know, this is how you tie yourself to this land. Um, so, you know, let's all take this as serious as we can. Dig in. You know, I'm here to help in any kind of way that I can. Um, but as always, I appreciate you all and, um, I will see everyone next time. Peace. Take care.